Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have a friend Laura here today, and she decided that there is no need for announcement prior to the service, so the bell has rung. Glad it? Yeah.
Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. And now we will read responsively by the half verse, Psalm 91. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked. Not are they in the ways of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the laws of the Lord. And they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. But everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is doomed. Our second reading is from James chapter 3. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing, yielding full of her mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed in the human hands, and they will kill him. And in three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Yep, that's a big one. Despair. What was that? Despair. 
Fear, okay. Well, despair. 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 Yeah, that's that's that one. Okay. Envy. Envy. Yes, a lot of envy. Hatred. Hatred. Grief. Grief. Joy. Joy? As a spiritual disease? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> List a whole slew of spiritual diseases. Bitter envy, selfish ambition, boastfulness, false truth, and we're not even talking about the news, are we? <laughs> Conflicts, disputes, war, cravings, disorder, arguing who is the greatest, being afraid, and on it goes, right? Now, much like physical diseases and ailments, spiritual ailments are really just symptoms of something much deeper. We can either put a band-aid on it, right? And just keep putting a band-aid on that wound and it'll never really heal. Or we can try to get to the root of whatever is ailing us. That's going to take a little more work and energy, isn't it? But once we get to the root of whatever it is that is causing our distress or illness, then we have a cure. We can have medical treatment, medicine, and in time, hopefully heal. So how many of us know that person <coughs> that person who is difficult, ornery, argumentative, always has to be right, because they are always right, right? <laughs> um, tend to be um, somewhat mean-spirited or snarky or use a lot of put-down humor with people. Oh, uh, and they interrupt a lot. We all know that person. In short, these people tend to cause a lot of dissension wherever they go and are seemingly oblivious to their shortcomings. We all know that person, right? But of course, it can never be us, right? <laughs> so as far as all these spiritual ailments and diseases that were just mentioned, what do you suppose is the root source or cause of all these manifested spiritual diseases? I'm hearing crickets. <laughs> Unbelief. Okay, that's that's fine. Greed. 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 Okay. That, that would be another spiritual disease. Okay. The root of all spiritual diseases, negative emotions, negative thoughts and actions, is fear. Yeah. Fear is the root of all spiritual diseases. Think about it. Fear is also the root of hate, racism, sexism, homophobia. In fact, that pretty much means fear of gay people, right? Polarized thinking, doubt, jealousy, shame, and the like. All of these things are based and rooted fear. Now to be sure, there are times when fear is needed. So let us distinguish between unhealthy fear and healthy fear. Our healthy fears keep us safe, are there to alarm us, you know, 
Don't walk around downtown Phoenix at 2 a.m. alone. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> or, or last week, Tuesday, I was feeling some fear and trepidation as I drove to the dentist's office <laughs> about to have my dental surgery. And so I think that's a normal fear, you know? I mean, we, I mean who doesn't fear going to the dentist, right? <laughs> But then there are unhealthy fears. And these unhealthy fears cause all kinds of suffering in our lives and all those around us in the new world. The spiritual diseases that we just talked about are all based in unhealthy fear. Now, to be sure, we've all experienced a high level of fear the past year and a half or so, due to world events and, of course, the pandemic. And I'm sure most of us are ready to be done with fear and start enjoying life again. I know I sure am. I am so tired of this. Aren't you? Oh my gosh. Now, last week, I got to talk before I had the dentistry. <laughs> I went out for the first time since before the pandemic. And I went out and I heard a band at a nightclub. What a blast. It was so wonderful. And then on Saturday, I went to the art museum in Phoenix and walked around and saw some beautiful art. It was really nice. And we are ready, I know, to be done with all this spirit. But it's important for us on the spiritual journey that we all are to not just sweep our fears under the rug or harbor or hang on to fears that we may be totally unaware of. It's important to examine our lives every so often and make sure something isn't going on under the hood, so to speak, that can manifest into a spiritual disease. As the famous spiritual guru from the Star Wars movies has said, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering, fear is the path to the dark side. Do you remember who said that? Yoda. <laughs> Wisdom from Yoda. Fear just begets more fear. However, thankfully, there is an antidote to fear. Our scripture readings for today also mention many positive thoughts and emotions and actions. Joy, peace, wisdom, gentleness, mercy, good fruits, willing to yield, hope happiness, and so forth. All good things, right? And what is the root of all good things? Love. 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 Yes. Ding! <laughs> you guys got it. Love is the root of all good things. And so essentially, everything we do in life, every action, every choice we make, every thought we think, every emotion we feel is based on two choices or two root sources, fear or love. It all comes down to those two things. Love grows our spirit, fear not so much. Love is the medicine and the antidote to fear. Now, of course, overcoming our fear is no easy thing, is it? We're all human. It is, in fact, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, spiritual hurdles and emotional and hurt hurdles in life. So how do we do this? How do you guys deal with your fears? 
Just think from that, that answer. Well, I would say the first step is to face or acknowledge our fear. And I know, not at all easy or pleasant to do. Most of us are afraid to even think about or face our fears, much less acknowledge them and deal with them. It's much easier to avoid them, blame other people or the world for all that's wrong. Much easier to busy ourselves with distractions and the like and not face our fears. I did it for years. I was a master of distraction. <laughs> but if we cannot face our fears, we become spiritually stuck, and we may fall prey to one of these spiritual diseases, if not more. We then become not ready for the next part of our spiritual path. And this goes not only for individuals, but also groups of people, whether they be organizations, clubs, places of business or work, schools, and <clears throat> even churches. All are easily, we all can fall prey to spiritual diseases. One thing is for sure, facing our fears and overcoming our fears is nearly impossible to do alone. It will take every ounce of strength and support we can muster and call upon. We will need God's help, the help of others, and all good things rooted in love. But if we can do this, the rewards are immeasurable. Your spiritual life and awareness will grow and expand more than you can possibly imagine. And you will be happy, whole, and at peace. Believe me, I have seen it happen. I saw this in numerous patients in the hospital when I worked at the VA hospital. And all the times I, many times that over the numerous years that I visited people in the hospital as a military chaplain. Dealing with a life-threatening illness or a serious illness, as we know, is very, very scary, terrifying, in fact. <coughs> and I watched the patients as they faced their illnesses, they also faced their fears. And in the process, I watched so many of them grow spiritually by leaps and bounds. And then, it happened to me. One day, as some of you know, I was working at a VA hospital in Palo Alto, California. I was one of the chaplains, and one day, my life turned upside down, and I was faced with a life-threatening illness, and I suddenly became the patient. The first time in my life I'd ever had to deal with, ever had to be, face such fear. What's really weird, everyone, is that all the years as a military chaplain and I have flown into Baghdad, Iraq, wearing the flask vest and the helmet, watching the gunners in the airplane take their spots. And as the plane spiraled down to land in Baghdad, sure, I was afraid, but I was also full of adrenaline. And then when I landed in Antarctica on the ice runways, I was afraid, but I was also excited. So I was masking my fear with all these other things. But when I got sick, I was forced to face my fear. And I remember the day after I had the major surgery that helped save my life, I was laying in the hospital bed, and I remember being visited by one of the hospital chaplains. I was pretty much in and out of consciousness, you know, the day before just having surgery and all. I was not able to open my eyes and talk to her. 
and I can't really remember what she said to me, but I remember her presence, and I remember her coming up to me and whispering in my ear, and that her presence was a very kind and caring and loving presence, very comforting. And she left a card on the table next to the hospital bed, and it said, Courage is fear that has said its prayers. I still have that card to this day. And I have to tell you what, when I first went through all this, it was 10 years ago now. 10 years. I have that card in my kitchen posted where I see it every day so I could see this wisdom from above. Courage is fear that has said its prayers. We're all faced with fears every day, all kinds, all levels, all forms. It does not matter the type, the intensity, or variety. Fear is fear. And the only way out of it is through it. There are numerous spiritual practices and prayers that can help us deal with our fears. And there are many kind and good people who can help us along the path to life. Take time to pray and listen. Be there for one another. Ask God for help in overcoming your fears. Fear is the root of all spiritual diseases. It is the roadblock to our spiritual awareness and growth and overall health and wellness in body, mind, and spirit. The way out is through love. Yes, it will take a lot of work. Yes, it will take time. Yes, it will not be easy. <clears throat> but with God, all things are possible. Courage is fear that is said in prayers. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. May we think and pray Yes, spoken through Christ. We believe in the 
Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Give your blessings to all who celebrate birthdays and those celebrating wedding anniversaries. Your law, O oh Lord, is perfect. And the dancing cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Michael's in Coach. We are thirsty, O merciful God. Give us a cup of water to drink. Hear our prayers and answer our cries of need through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our faith. <coughs>
And she stopped putting them in. Well, I'm done with it. And then I'm saying, wait a minute. I said, Thank you, Lord. And then she said, Do you want to do November? Yeah. And then I'm thinking, She's not going to say anything else. And then she said, Why about December? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. So then she had some open spot. So on Wednesday, I drove out to Tucson and I had lunch with Pastor Judy. And again, I'm saying, Lord, should I ask? Should I say anything? That little kind of worked very well. So we're sitting down, we're having a conversation. But we were sitting down, and after I had a sip of uh, whatever I was drinking, <laughs> water, right? I, 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 water with lemon and some other stuff, right? I pushed the pad in front of um, Pastor Judy, and she filled the blank spots. We will have coverage from now until the end of the year. Year, I'm available for Easter and Palm Sunday. And I know she's already told me she will be available for something. So that was fair that I had, that I have realized that I don't have that fair anymore. I got plenty more, but that one is not that. So that's some good news that we have someone that will be with us for a while and they've also offered to be here if we need an emergency or funeral day. So, I mean, God is working through this little church and through you people who have been praying and supporting. So thank you for doing this. I know you're doing it for God, but I felt like you're doing it for me, so I, I'm going to be selfish. So thank you for being with us today. I ask you to continue to follow us on www.stpetersepiscopalcg.org on Wednesday, on Tuesday evening for evening prayer at 6 p.m. and on Wednesday evening for Compline at 6 p.m. online. Sorry. So, um, I wanted to let you all know that, I don't know if you've been keeping up to date with the local paper, but there have been some local activities. I think there's music on Fridays now, and I know they're doing um, a downtown events. But I also have some other community events. I've got flyers, I'll leave them on the back today. But CAC will have a concert on Thursday, October 7th. Um, in the past, it's been at 7 o'clock and it was free. Um, I think that's the same this year, but I will confirm that and let people know. And at the end of October, they will be doing a musical with Black Box Theater, um, and it's Jekyll and Hyde. So get your Victorian on and come on. Um, and that will be Friday, October 29th, and Saturday the 30th. I know on Saturday it will be a matinee as well. So that will be kind of nice. So more information to come on that. The exciting part is Hale Theater. Um, they are open for business. I will warn you, they do not socially distance, and masks are recommended, but not required. So if you go to Hale Theater, I am recommending medically wear your masks because there's no social distancing going on. But we have reserved tickets. Uh, I have 10 seats reserved for a number of shows. I've already had some people want to sign up for that. So on this list, it has the show date, time, and then when the monies will be due. Um, if we have all 10 slots filled, it's uh, $32 per show. If we do not have 10 slots filled, then it's $42. So before every show, before the money is due, I would let you know how much we're gonna owe. Um, and I would collect it then. So like I said, I will have this at the back. Um, and I'm taking sign-ups, so you can call me. I brought all my paperwork with me today. You can snag me after church if you want, whatever is easiest. Or if you, you know, want to email me, that's fine too. Thanks. Thank you, Kari. Uh, Kari? Yes. Oh, no, I can't hurt
morning. Good morning. The Hassock Road School District has uh, requested that one of their huge needs is underwear and socks again for children. We've done this in the past when we've collected underwear and socks. So we're going to have a couple undie Sundays. And if you would like to donate underwear and socks for children, uh, kindergarten through eighth grade, that would be wonderful. You can just bring them to the church and we'll bless them. And then we'll take them over to the district office and they'll distribute them according to the greatest need among the children in our community. Thank you. The people of this little church with a big heart in the desert look for things for us to do. And Karen and I will be attending the grand reopening tour of the Mesa Temple for the Church of Latter-day Saints on October 13th. It's uh, an official program with all the politician and uh, Frank, who Crazy. was our, um, a member of our church and was the superintendent of public schools, will be there, Frank and Nancy, and all sorts of people will be there. So our name will be out in the open now because we will be attending. So we may get some more people from doing this. So Karen set this up and then called me and said, I have an opportunity for you, is how she puts it. <laughs> and so I didn't need to call this person, is how she said it. She didn't ask me to call, she told me to call. So I did. And so we'll be going there and we'll bring back to you guys what's happening out there. So thank you. Um, we're being the worship. Plus, we have some um, um, shells to bless. Do we have any anniversaries? Traveling. Travelers. 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 Okay. Come on up for the blessing. Birthday anniversary. Birthday.
bless them with your healing presence and love. And be with us always in all we see, hear, and do. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us in offering and sacrifice. Thanks to you, O oh God, 
which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, the Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to this command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Peter and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation, and head of the church, and author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Lord, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come.